All right, classic US power metal heads. I am going to uh, review a band that uh, it's very special to me, a band that I just discovered on my own randomly at a uh, local uh, record metal record store, actually. It used to be called Abyss Records. And uh, I remember finding this CD sitting there that had this uh, transformer looking robot on the front. And I remember looking on the back, I'm like thinking, this looks cool, this looks cool. And I flip it over on the back, I'm looking at the band members, one one guy had a Metallica shirt on, and you know, it's from the 80s, I'm like, this this has to be really good. Well, the band is called Liege Lord, and let me tell you something, that was one of the most magical CD moments I ever had, ever. So, let's talk about Liege Lord today. Um, so Liege Lord is a U.S. power metal band. Um, I did a, my last video I did on Brocus Helm, and I was telling, you know, talking about what I think the big four of U.S. power metal is. Um, there's a reason why I didn't put Liege Lord on there. Um, first of all, those other bands, I think, were a tad earlier than Liege Lord. But more, more than that, I think the other bands had a little bit more of an impressive discography overall. Now, now I'm not saying Liege Lord has a has a poor discography, but I think they got one crown jewel of an album and a couple albums that are just good. Like they're I mean they're pretty good, but they're not amazing in my opinion. So let's start with the beginning. Um, the first album, Freedom's Rise. This was the last Liege Lord album I end up ended up getting, and uh, you know, you know, I uh, wow, I think that's the original album cover on the flip side there. Wow, I actually kind of, in a way, like this better. I don't know why, a bird like like eating some kind of a dead animal, <laughs> but um, so here's the issue with uh, the first couple Liege Lord albums. So I think the music is is good. The guitar is solid. The production's actually really good. A lot better than like Brocus Helm and even early Manila Road. Um, I mean, I really like the way the albums sound. Um, but there's something about the songwriting that kind of is a little lackluster. Um, I feel like the riffs, while they're good and very competent, like the musicianship's really good here. The singer's really good. He's got a really good range. Um, but the problem is, I don't feel like this band has learned how to make memorable songs yet. Unlike the, all the Brocus Helm albums, I mean, they came out right out of the gate with incredibly impressive songwriting. I just feel like these songs don't stand up and they don't um they don't really uh differentiate from each other as much as i would like to from you know a band of this era <clears throat> even like the singing like i don't hear any melodies vocally that really stick in my head or remember i just don't even the riffs. There might be, like, one riff on this whole album that I kind of remember, like, <laughs> after, like, a long time of not listening to these. I, I I don't know. If if the songs were just a little bit more memorable, a little more focus on on uh, choruses... And, and let's face it, like, there are some bands who don't really write choruses that much that still really are, are awesome. Megadeth, for instance... Look at Rust in Peace. Only two songs on that whole album, I think, really even have choruses. Just don't need it. I mean, it's just, just one of those bands that could just get by with it. Liege Lord's not one of them. I'm not saying they don't have choruses. I'm just saying they're just like, they're so subtle that they just kind of go... Whoosh. But I don't know. Okay, start. But did they get better? Well, we have Burn to My Touch their uh, second album, which by the way, this album cover is awesome. I love the colors. I, I, it's totally like my kind of fantasy, you know, it's almost like, um, fate's warning, 
you know type of fantasy uh but but uh, but fate's warning's a lot a lot better <laughs> than this album um so okay so it's an improvement in some ways the production might be a little better i really like the way it sounds i like the way the guitar sounds the drums the vocals so really all this is is like a slightly more polished version of the first album. I It still runs into the same problems. The guitar riffs are fine on their own. Like the guitar is really good. They're more than competent. But nothing I nothing really sticks with me, man. Like but I think it's the third track. Um there is a solo on there that's just flat out awesome. That just kind of makes the song for me. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this album just never connects with me. It it sounds like something I like. It looks like something I like. And I don't dislike it. I just... I listen to these from time to time. They're not everyday listeners for me. And I always hoped maybe I'd hear something a little different the next time that I didn't hear last time. And it just never seems to happen. But... Yeah, it's just like, so, you know, you got a riff, a decent riff, not a mind-blowing riff, but a good, decent riff, and then you got the vocals who, it's like, instead of coming up with, like, vocal lines that are just awesome, it's just like, well, it's in the right key. <laughs> That's about all I can say about it. It's in the right key. It, it, it fits. It just doesn't, it just doesn't blow me away. And I really hate to say this, but, so... But third time is a charm, by the way. So they would go to do their third album. And this is the one that I found at Abyss Records. Like, gosh, this was like 2004, 2005 when I found this. Just a blind buy. Master Control. Look at that. That is awesome. That is total 80s greatness right there. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I just kind of blind blind bought this. Uh, yeah, see, one guy had a Metallica shirt. That was one of the things that made me buy it. And just the sheer fact, I mean, the logo looked cool. This little Transformer guy looked cool. Had to have been good. Oh, no boy, is it. So, I'll be honest. When you first listen to this, you're going to think, is this the same band? <laughs> this does not sound anything like the first two albums at all the, uh, the production the guitar sound even a different vocalist Ooh, and I love the vocalist on here Joe Camo is an awesome vocalist he also ended up singing for a couple of Annihilator albums and uh, I think he had some dealings with Overkill or something if I remember right something weird like that but Joe Camo has just kind of been one of those guys that's just kind of floated around and done a little bit of things here and there. But, oh, dude, this is one of his crown jewel. Probably his absolute crown jewel right here. He even kind of reminds me a little bit of a Bruce Dickinson type of voice. It's really weird. Like, uh, but, but let me tell you, he could actually sing some thrash because when he sang for Annihilator on Carnival Diablos and Waking the Fury, you know, he could actually do some raspy you know, thrash vocals too. So the dude's got a lot of, uh, he, he can be kind of versatile, but, uh, he sings some good power metal and I kind of consider this like potentially the master of puppets of U S power metal. I don't know why. I just kind of think that, um, yeah, I don't know. So, <clears throat> so what, so what is so special about these songs? Well, everything has a good chorus. Pretty well every song on this album has, has a good chorus. Um, the, the, the leads are like 10 times more memorable. The riffs are memorable. This is like they realize what they have done wrong in the past two albums and corrected all of it. Like this, this album is flawless. It's perfect. Um, this whole album, I can, I've can i listened to this whole thing so many times, I can't even count. Uh, there ain't very many albums I can actually say that about. The first two Liege Lord albums, I can hardly do that. <clears throat> and, and and the thing is about the, the original singer, I don't know if, it, the, if it's that I don't like the singer or if I just don't like 
his style. I don't know. I just don't think the band had that uh, that gift of memorable memorable songwriting yet, but uh, they found it. They found it here, and unfortunately, this would be their last album. Like, dude, they get it so perfect, and then that's it. it sucks. But hey, that's U.S. metal in a nutshell. If this band were German or something, they'd probably still had a career, but, you know, that's just what happened in the U.S. Unless you're Manila Road, you pretty much disappeared in the 90s and early 2000s, but until the resurgence came and then a lot of these bands came back. Fortunately, I did get to see these guys live, uh, Legions of Metal Festival one year. Um, that was that was great. Uh, Joe Camo, I was standing right in front of him and he even fist bumped me a few times. It was cool. <laughs> but yeah, they still got it. They're just as good live as they are in the album. So but yeah, I don't know. So what are some highlights on here? Um, all of them. <laughs> Fear Itself, Eye of the Storm, Master Control. They do a pretty good cover of Kill the King by Rainbow. Matter of fact, that's the first time I've ever heard Kill the King was this album. And it made me want really get into Rainbow. Um, but yeah, this whole thing. Uh, the ending fallout's really good too. Nice, nice heavy, chunky riffage going on there. But um, I say, if you have not heard this or have this in your collection, you're screwing up. Seriously, you're doing you're you're doing it wrong. Get this album today, as soon as possible. You'll you'll thank me seriously. But anyway, that's my Liege Lord. Uh, review i i feel like every album kind of got better with each release until they uh maxed out with this with this masterpiece and that's all i gotta say till next time